so um, the history of this was uh, the um, there's a national shrine network called ACT, which you'll hear, hear more about. Um, but luckily, through that, a couple years ago, um, we had a supplement to that to develop a new user interface for Shrine. And uh, uh, the rationale behind that was that I2B2 has a lot of capabilities, a lot of features to it, but for a novice user who's never seen this before, and that was a lot of what the users were of the ACT network, it was kind of too much, the learning curve was high. So we wanted to come up with sort of a novice interface that was a little bit easier for um, new people to jump on and start using it. Um, we created this, and and Apollo will talk about some of the um, background behind this, but uh, people really liked it, and they kept saying, when is I2B2 user interface going to get these new um, look and feel? Um, so it took a little while, but we eventually found some funding for that and uh, uh, brought Nick Benick in. He created the original I2B2 web client with himself um, and uh, um, others, Mark Dene and others, who came in to help this project. So um, I've been very impressed about how rapidly and beautiful the new UI has been progressing. I haven't had that much input, uh, direct day-to-day -day, um, work on this, so they show me the updates and ask me for my, um, my feedback. And tomorrow there's a user interface working group, and that group has also been very helpful in both the Shrine UI and in the I2B2 web client UI providing feedback and doing testing and providing input for that. Um, so uh, with that, I want to hand it over to Anna Palmaram to um, talk about uh, some background and approaches to how they're doing the new user, in user interface. Nick Benick will then provide a demo today. And at the UI working group tomorrow, um, we'll go into deta technical details of how the web client works. And if you want to build plugins or extensions to it, um, how to do that. Thank you. Thanks. Okay, hopefully this works. All right, so I'm going to talk about some of the goals we had for this interface. Um, so our number one goal was to replace I2B2's YUI. Um, YUI stands for Yahoo User Interface. Um, so something we definitely wanted to update with things like Bootstrap um, and Golden Layout. Uh, we also wanted to um, uh, update these code libraries because it was limiting some of the ability to add new functionality um, and you know there could have been potential uh, security risks. Um, our second goal was to unify the I2B2 UI and with the Shrine UI. So we want, knew that Doing this will sort of enhance the usability of both applications as users, um, the user flow from one application to the other. The Shrine UI, which we released in May of 2020, was designed um, with a lot of data-driven and user-focused design. So we did a lot of um, landscape analysis. We iterated through a lot of wireframes. Uh, we held focus group uh, at, with, you know, at the I2B2 conference. Um, and as Griffin mentioned, we went back to the user working group a lot to get a lot of feedback and incorporate it into our design. Um, well, we have this beautiful new Shrine UI, but we couldn't exactly just plop it on top of I2B2. Um, so there's a couple of reasons for that. There are differences in the technical stack between I2B2 and Shrine. Um, more importantly, they are two uh, different applications with two um, different feature sets. They are a lot of overlaps, but they do have some differences. Um, and lastly, the I2B2 UI has a lot of custom analytic tools, um, enhancements through plugins, and so that wasn't, that's not a, uh, a feature that's currently supported in Shrine. Um, so that's how we had to go and create something else for I2B2. Um, the screenshot here is the what we released in May of 2020. So you can sort of see how we, um, you know, use three different panels. We sort of wanted to focus just this tab on building out the uh, query. Um, and so when you run the query, it, you know, takes you to a new tab. Um, I think you'll see a bit of this in one of the later sessions. Our third goal was to support the legacy plugins. Like I said, this is stuff that the, um, uh, community has been building out for a year, so we wanted to make sure any of the legacy plugins were still supported with the new UI. 
And then because we did have a new technical stack, we also wanted to support the new plugins. And I think uh, at tomorrow's session, uh, Nick will talk more in details about the differences in the framework to support those plugins. Our fourth goal was to make sure it was easy to install. Um, so this will not require a new instance of I2B2, but rather you're just going to be updating your HTML, your JavaScript, and your CSS files. Um, and then for future capabilities, because we're updating to HTML5, um, this allows us a lot of different capabilities, such as dragging and dropping um, from the I2B2 web client into applications like Jupyter Notebook. Um, so this is just a list of high level of some of the features in I2B2. Our goal for this project is to have a one-to-one uh, -one match between the features in the existing I2B2 web client and to the new UI. And lastly, I just want to encourage everyone to get involved. This community has been really helpful um, in the direction that we take some of our designs. Um, so there is the UI working group. Um, we do publish our code to the GitHub uh, repo, so you can check that out. And I just want to shout out to the team um, who is doing the work day in, day out. We've been able to make really great progress on this project. And with that, I'll hand it over to Nick for our demo. Thank you, Anna Palmer. So let's see how quickly we can switch this over. Sharing screen. That's one half of it. And let's see. And is this what we are showing? So I think I'm missing one step. Oh, that was it. And then two screens. Wonderful. Yep. All right. So we were able to do what we weren't able to do. All right, so you guys get the full experience uh, running off my local laptop. So uh, uh, Anna Palma covered a lot of uh, what we're trying to do at a very high level. Uh, we are taking the old I2B2 client that you had to use the Internet Wayback Machine in order to find documentation on how to program and make modifications to it. It was uh, uh, extremely old and uh, uh, but still incredibly useful. So we went ahead, started this project, started replacing all the libraries, and we've come up with uh, something that actually works quite well, quite nice. And the data enclave, let's redo this. Uh, and there we go. Coming into it, uh, we can see immediately that colors have changed. We've gone ahead and tried to make it look a lot more like the Shrine client. Uh, the colors that uh, really pop, uh, really uh, attract your eye to different areas of the screen and uh, have been studied for usability in uh, various, uh, various uh, work by the Shrine team before we even got to working on this. We have our terms on the left-hand side. We have workspace. We have queries. And uh, it is more or less laid out in a very similar way uh, as the old thing. Uh, immediately, one thing you can see, you can now move things around. This is just basically one of the frameworks that uh, we went ahead and reused a modern library that allows us to have this functionality to resize and move things around the screen. Uh, we have the ability to uh, go ahead and uh, go into demographics and uh, let's just run a query using the same style of building a query that is done in the Shrine client, which is we are building a query going from the top down rather than the old I2B2 version, which built it from the left-hand side and built across 
the various windows to the right as you would add topics. Uh, when you run a query, you can go ahead, get patient counts, we can get breakdowns, get a couple of those in there. Uh, so you can see some of the stuff coming back. You run the query, uh, the status comes back at the bottom right here, and we go ahead and have the breakdowns in numerical form. And at the very bottom, we've already implemented graphical formats. Uh, we do have uh, some small plugins that we're working on that give us the ability to do these graphical breakdowns across multiple uh, patient sets. Uh, that's in the pipeline uh, being worked on. Uh, we have pass queries where you have the ability to, just like the legacy I2B2 version, we have the ability to go through and get all the previous information uh, from all the previous queries. And of course, one of the big things that was key to this, that was one of the first things that we de-risked, was the analysis tools. So one of the things that made this a uh, very challenging project was the fact that we had a whole community build plugins uh, over, over a decade worth of time and investment in building these various technologies. And we did not want to cause everyone to have to rebuild every plugin that they had created. Uh, so we were able to uh, modify and create newer technologies and do some very, very creative design work and be able to exec, uh, execute and run the legacy plugins with no modifications to the code. So you have the ability, this is actually running inside here with Yahoo user interface, running in an isolated environment that is not polluting the main uh, space here with uh, Yahoo user interfaces, brings everything up, uh, having said that, though, we still have modern plugins. Modern plugins have a, a lot more capabilities that are built in. There are much better uh, security involved in that, uh, locking down a lot more data. So you can actually run a plugin that's a modern plugin and not have to worry about uh, data leakage. Uh, only the information that you're interested in getting can be moved over. Here's an example of the data coming out. This is something called an SDX data packet. Uh, you don't need to know too much about that unless you're a programmer, and if you are, you definitely should come to uh, our workshop tomorrow. Uh, there's a lot of very cool things that you're gonna learn and that you're gonna like about this new client. And in addition to the drag drop capabilities, uh, we've implemented the info tab where you have the ability to go ahead and get information about ontology topics. Uh, you can just cut and paste into your, uh, into your notepad, so you can paste it elsewhere just by doing that. And uh, with that, I think I'm going to show you one of the cool things that we can do now that we've changed fundamentally the way that we're doing the drag drop operations which really has unleashed a new I2B2 client, we have the ability to get something like Jupyter Notebook and create a very small widget that will run. So here's an example of a Jupyter Notebook running in Python. We have on the first line that I'm going to execute uh, a widget library that loads a single widget called test target here Second line, we are initializing test target widget, displaying it. Now we have something there that's saying it can accept an I2B2 drag drop operation. We go over here, say, okay, this patient set I just ran, I wanna drag and drop that into here. And we can see Jupyter Notebook running on local host and we have I2B2 web client running on dataenclave.net. Data totally different host, totally different servers running. You get that data done, you extract it. It's in a JSON format. Go ahead, look at the keys. These are the standard keys that come on SDX 
format uh, data packets. And if you want to get that data that you just ran a query on I2B2, there it is. That's all the information that you need to be able to have your Jupyter notebook reach out to the I2B2 server that you just queried on, on dataenclave.net and pull down that data set. This is the unique value for that data set. You can get that information and immediately start doing processing on it. So these are things that are just enabled by it and we're just starting to scratch the surface and seeing what type of future we can create, see if we can take I2B2 and turn it from one application, two applications, uh, a couple of applications and turn it into something that's more like a uh, ecosystem of tools with uh, various libraries that will run in various environments so that you can create a bioinformatics tool that will accept drag drop operations from any number of tools that are running the I2B2 uh, data transfer standards and do that seamlessly so we're not looking at just a web-based client somewhere. We're looking at a web-based screen for a client that is running across multiple servers. So there's a real interesting opportunity for us to take this in different directions. And um, we are moving very quickly on developing this. We are looking to make this I2B2 web client version two, uh, the, this modern web client, one-to-one uh, -one parity with the existing I2B2 client and have that replaced very shortly. And there's a great team working on it. We have very, very high velocity. Uh, we're running it fast, we're running it agile. It's like a startup company. So it's really great. And I wanted to thank everyone who's helped to make this happen. And uh, that's my presentation. Any questions from anyone? From myself or Anna Palma or Griffin? In the back? Huh? I'm sorry, could you repeat that? Oh, so basically saying taking, uh, the question was, can you still take a previous query and move that here and make that a previous condition? Uh, that is going to be built. It is not yet built right now. We haven't gotten to that point, but it is on our list because it, is a piece of functionality that does exist currently in the I2B2 web client. So once again, if it exists in the current I2B2 web client, we're gonna try and make sure that every single piece of functionality is built out so that you will not have any problems uh, doing that. And once again, because you do have the capability of running legacy plugins, you should not need to make any code changes to existing infrastructure or existing code bases that you may have created for your local uh, environment or your local institution. Yes. Yes. So there are two, and I don't want to get too technical for uh, the audience here, but uh, there are technically two plugin systems here. One is a legacy plugin system, which will spawn up a legacy Yahoo user interface, ancient technology environment for you to run your old technology in, your old plugins in. So it will run under the legacy plugin. Um, but we are really encouraging people to move forward and if they have resources or the capabilities to really expand uh, the ecosystem for the new plugin design, uh, which is much better thought out. And there's a lot of lessons that we've implemented uh, because we've learned them over the decade plus years of people developing various plugins. There's not enough Red Bull for me to finish that before tomorrow, but uh, I did try. Uh, so we are developing, uh, uh, we are going to be developing documentation for that. Uh, if you look at the old I2B2 client, 
There was a 50 some page document on how to write, uh, how it operated and how to build plugins. Uh, we plan on doing the exact same thing. Uh, a system that is not documented is not a very good system in my opinion. So if you want adoption, you want other people to contribute, uh, we have open repositories in GitHub. We want people to look at what we're doing, know what we're doing, understand it, and then contribute. Uh, it's all about building a community and it's all about uh, moving this into something greater than just one development team. Yes. We, we had uh, a very simple plugin that was being developed. Uh, we just ran out of time. We had a lot of things. I mean, if you're interested in, in having a postdoc or having a student or having someone uh, in your institution help us, uh, we are more than happy to farm out little chunks of thing and provide s support because, I mean, maybe we can do it faster. But at the same time, if we're teaching other people at other institutions, it's just going to benefit the community much better. GitHub, it's updated uh, at least weekly, uh, usually multiple times per week. So I'm not sure if I'm out of time, but uh, thank you everyone and uh, thanks to the team and everyone else.